Hello, DFS family. Welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. Dot net after a rather disappointing 40 point victory last weekend i am your host pat mikowski and you can find me at twitter at patty mac 33 i am joined by my co-host mr david eddie whom you can find at twitter at corporal eddie now before we get started please do us a quick favor and hit that like button if you enjoy this podcast, then do yourself a favor. Hit that subscribe button. You want to leg up on all your buddies? Jump on over to fantasy6pack.net for some more great content. All I got to say, David, is from here on out, tail lights only. I'm back, bitch. Big Spoon. Big Big Spoon was that your nickname in in high school? Big Big Spoon. That was yes, that was my big that was my nickname, Big Spoon. I don't think that was. <laughs> I think it started. Anyways. I think it started with Little. <laughs> oh, maybe. But we've got we've got a little bit of a twist and something new for you this week. Well, um, so David, why don't you why don't you share with the folks what you got up your sleeve? Well, sure. Well, I'll tell you what. So I spent so much time last week coming up with this segment that obviously I wasn't able to spend enough time on my DFS lineup, which is why you won. Um, I mean, I, so, you know, so, um, the new, I knew there'd be an excuse somewhere in there. It it was the new segment, not worth it. Patrick, I sacrificed, I sacrificed for the betterment of the podcast. I appreciate it. It's going to be great. You're welcome, Patrick. I, no problem. So what we're going to do, is we want to come up with a new segment where we take questions um, from people that are new or inexperienced in DFS and kind of help them understand the ins and outs of the hobby. So the new segment that we're going to kick off each episode with is going to be the Virgin Mary question of the week. So Patrick, why don't you go ahead and give us a week 10 uh, edition question for me. So the question this week, David, is as follows. I hear a lot about stacking your quarterback with a wide receiver or tight end, but can you also stack your quarterback with a running back? Can you stack your quarterback with more than one receiver or tight end? And if you can stack with a running back, can you stack your quarterback with a wide receiver or tight end along with a running back. Okay, so no, that that is actually a fantastic question. And I mean, to be quite honest, when I'm kind of looking at how I'm going to um, go about building my lineups each week, stacking is is exactly where I start. So um, first question is, you know, can you stack your quarterback with a running back as opposed to the more common wide receiver and tight end? And the answer to that question is, you absolutely can. Um, It is a little bit more difficult because pretty much, I mean, technically any wide receiver or any tight end is in play with a quarterback. Um, You know, obviously you're looking for the best matchup or, you know, someone that's maybe a really good value to where you could pivot off of, you know, the best option. But when it comes to running back, you've got to be really specific because for the most part, almost exclusively, you need to stack that running back or you know stack the quarterback with a pass catching running back. So for example, the guys this week um, that I would consider stackable with a quarterback would be like an Alvin Kamara, uh, JD McKissick. Um, Kamara is averaging nine targets a game, so that's wide receiver level. JD McKissick is not so well known because you know, all he does is, is you know, play that ca- uh, catcher role. So, um, you know, but he's all the way up to 7.3 targets a game. Uh, you got your Ronald Jones, or I'm sorry, Ronald Jones. I guess that would work too, but Aaron Jones is who I meant to say. Um, you know, yep. so he's getting five targets a game. Our boy DeAndre Swift, he's at four and a half targets a game. Uh, Chase Edmonds, Mike Davis, James Robinson, uh, all guys that are at four targets a game. This particular week, Duke Johnson, 3.7 targets. So you don't have so many options. 
and it's certainly not where I look to stack. But um, I think Green Bay would be a really good example this week because they go against the Jaguars. And we all know Aaron Rodgers is, you know, a decent option week in and week out. Um, part of the reason he's such a good option is he's got Devontae Adams to throw the ball to. So stacking Rodgers and Adams, that's obvious. When they go against a team like the Jaguars, who just blow in all facets of the game defensively, that's a time where either you can throw Aaron Rodgers in, or Aaron Rodgers. Geez, I can't talk today, Patrick. Um, either you can I know throw, you're struggling. yeah, you can throw Aaron Jones in there as the sack with Rodgers if you want to. But in reality, to answer the next part of the question of can you stack your quarterback with a receiver and a tight end or a wide or a uh, wide receiver and tight end. So, yes, this would be an example again this week where you could go Rodgers, Adams, and Jones. If I was going to stack that Green Bay team with, you know, Rodgers and two additional players, that is where I would go. I wouldn't go with a Tanyan or an MVS. I would go an Aaron Jones. And that actually is probably going to be a stack that I will run out this week. So, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to, you know, kind of look at what you want to do with your lineup as far as stacking is concerned. You know, what type of um, contest are you entering? If you're doing um, double ups, then... You know, you don't have to stack if you don't want to. You're kind of just going more for the safest floor possible. So sometimes stacking makes sense, but not always. If you're just playing like head-to-heads or something, then stacking is completely unnecessary. Um, I mean, if that's just where the best value um, leads you, then that's fine. But if we're talking like, you know, we usually do on the podcast about, you know, MME, you know, contests with, 5, 10, 50, 100,000 people, then you absolutely have to stack your quarterback. Um, But long story short, yes, you can definitely stack your quarterback. With a running back, you just have to know what you're doing because you've got to be very specific about those running backs. And then, yes, you can go ahead and make a bigger stack and do a quarterback with a running back and a wide receiver or tight end. So, that's a very good question, and it's probably more critical than people understand. Um, I mean, if you're entering anything that's MME, this is kind of just the mandatory minimum of what you have to do, along with you know following all the rules. Um, so again, rule number one, Patrick, play good players. Rule number two, volume over matchup. Now, rule number three is correlation, correlation, correlation. Stacking that is correlation. If I'm getting Rodgers, Adams, and Jones, the reason I'm stacking them together is I'm expecting Rodgers to throw touchdown passes to Devontae Adams. So we double dip on the yards. We double dip on the touchdowns. And then I'm not stacking Aaron Jones so much for his running ability, though in a matchup like this against the Jaguars, I I do know that I have that. I'm stacking it also because I expect him to get, you know, catches out of the backfield. So when that happens, again, I'm double dipping on the targets. I'm double dipping on the yards and touchdowns. Yeah, great. All great points. And, you know, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And, you know, there is there is not a wrong way to really stack, in my opinion. I mean, I've run some pretty crazy questionable stacks out there. Um and, you know, I, for one, I, I don't mind stacking a running back, you know, as long as it fits that kind of mold that you talked about. And, you know, a lot of times, too, what I do is if I'm running, uh, you know, uh, a really solid QB and wide receiver stack out there um, and the best option, you know, on the other side of the ball is a tight end as opposed to a wide receiver, you know, then I'm throwing that tight end as kind of my bounce back guy, my comeback player um you know as well so it's uh you know it's a trial and error thing you figure out what works you figure out what doesn't work um but yeah great question uh good start definitely looking forward to to seeing what comes of this um you know over the next several weeks so um let's uh let's get it started out Davey with uh with our picks for this week um, well, I, I would like to go first because my guy is a perfect example of what we just talked about with stacking. Okay, um, 
my guy, my gospel this week, core play, is going to be Mike Davis. We've, we've gone down this road before. Uh, Panthers against the Bucks. Now, why would my core play be a running back against arguably over the last, what, year and a half, the absolute best defense against the run? Well, I know. Pick me. Pick me. Patrick. I know. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Mikowski. That price is crazy, dude. $4,000. He is probably half of what he should be. And (laughs) the reason for that, quite simply, I guess, is that uh, they expected CMC to play this week, and it's about a 99.9% as of Friday evening at 6.49 p.m. in the Eastern Standard Time Zone that he will be out. So, I mean... This is almost a given, I think, and he's going to be just stupid owned. Um, I don't know, 60, 70%. It's, it's going to be outrageous, but, um, you know, he's the closest thing to a free square that we have seen in weeks. Uh, like I yeah. said, DraftKings really messed up, uh, you know, putting Davis at the minimum salary this week. He, it's just it's just crazy. Uh, like I said, CMC is going to be out for week 10, and even though Davis does get a tough matchup against the Bucks. I mean, at only 4K, it's almost impossible not to play him. And it just it doesn't take much of a game, um, you know, for him to, to get the points we need. He's going to have a 90-plus percent snap count. Um, he, you know, all he's got to do is get to 16 points to get to the new magical 4X. Um, not talking 3X so much anymore, Patrick. I'm raising my game a little bit. Um, Stepping up the game, baby. yeah. I, get I, there. Yep, I, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm going a little riskier here. So, three um, X at fifty thousand, you know, dollars to spend would get you a score. If everyone were to hit exactly three X, score one fifty. That's cool and all, but I'm now focusing my eyes much more towards a four X because that puts us at two hundred points. If you know, theoretically, everyone you know hit exactly four X, two hundred is where you really need to try to get to in MME lineups if you want to snag bags of money like I did last night in the uh, Indy and Tennessee showdown. I may or may not have won a tournament last night, but I don't want to brag, Patrick. Why don't you get to your gospel? <laughs> First off, on, to, on the Mike Davis thing, I about shit myself when I saw that McCaffrey was doubtful and I went to go look and see what they had this dude priced at and i got on to make the notes and i was rather disappointed but not at all surprised um that you had him locked in as your gospel this week already well i'll tell you um (laughs) i wish you would have said something because i would have gladly gave him to you because i was going back and forth between him and somebody else um and Mike Davis is just a little too obvious um, for me not to have gone with. So would you like me to give a bonus gospel, or do you just want to go ahead and get into to yours? No, we're just going to we're gonna get rolling. We'll get very into well, mine. Very well. So my gospel this week, um, quarterback for the Rams, Jared Goff, $6,500. They got the Seahawks coming into town. Goff threw the ball 61 times last weekend against the Miami Dolphins. Now he gets a matchup with Big Russ and the Hawks, and you know Seattle's going to put up points. And what does that mean? That means volume for the opposing quarterback. Let us not forget not only what Josh Allen did last week against Seattle, um, 415 yards, three touchdowns, 39 fantasy points. But how bad was Seattle all year against the pass? They give it up over 360 yards a game to opposing QBs to the tune of just over 28 fantasy points a game. Worst in the NFL. And how about the weapons that Goff has at his disposal? Number one and 1A, in my opinion, Cup and Woods, obviously. Recently, Reynolds has come on strong. Not to mention a couple of tight ends in Everett and Higby, who have been a little bit slow at the beginning of the season, but are definitely serviceable at that position and starting to get some looks. So many 
we just got done talking about it. Stacking possibilities in this game in particular with the Rams and the Seahawks. Got to get yourself some run on some golf this weekend. I got Jared Goff as my gospel. Yeah, when I saw the matchups this week before the pricing, um, that was a name that I thought was going to be pretty obvious. I think they did a really nice job of pricing him uh, because 65 is a little bit more, I think, than I'm comfortable playing and or paying at quarterback. I know that's weird for me to say because I'm the I'm I'm yeah. captain I'm captain uh, captain thrifty at quarterback. But yeah, um, when I can play Mike Davis at 4K. When I can play Duke Johnson at 5K, I'm saving so much money uh, at the running back position that for me, I'm going to be paying up at quarterback this week. I don't think I'm going to have much, if any, cheap quarterbacks. I, I, I will almost certainly have some Derek Carr just because um, it's a it's a great matchup. He's I think like 5200 or something stupid, 5600 something stupid, um, and I probably will have. A golfer too, just because he's got the potential, like you said, to go crazy, but he's also got the potential to just suck a big old fatty. So I'm not all in on golf because he scares me to death, um, and I'd rather just pay like 1,500 more for Kyler Murray, who I know is gonna, you know, kill it. His Murray's floor might be almost as good as golf's ceiling, um, but you got to pay for it. So speaking of uh, Kyler Murray, let me get into my devil for this week. So if I'm going to play Kyler Murray um, a lot this week, obviously I'm going to be playing a lot of DeAndre Hopkins, right? You would think Wrong. if you're stacking correctly. Wrong. That is incorrect, sir. I will be mostly fading DeAndre Hopkins uh, actually this week. Uh, he's coming in 77 hundo bills um, as a cards face, the bills. Um, now, listen, Nuke, as good as it gets at the wide receiver position, I, you'd have to be a fool to argue that. Each and every week, he can just go off and lead the slate in scoring. No question about that. However, he's got some things going against him this week um, that's going to have me not completely fading, but having uh, severely underweight on him um, compared to the field. First of all, he's the second most expensive wide receiver on the slate, which... Shouldn't necessarily be a huge shock to anyone. Um, He's almost certainly going to be shadowed by Tredavious White. Now, I do think that Hopkins is pretty much matchup proof. Uh, So the spot against White isn't necessarily enough just alone to fade him. Uh, But the last part, that's kind of what's the nail in the coffin for me. All right. Over the past four weeks for the Cardinals, Nuke is seeing just one more target per game than the $2,000 cheaper Christian Kirk. In my notes, I put Christina Kirk, so maybe that's a little bit of foresight (laughs) that I am going to be very wrong here. Um, But speaking of Christina Kirk, um, he has also actually outscored Nuke uh, during that four-week time period by the tune of nine points per game. So, like I said, I'll definitely have Murray in play this week and quite a lot, um, you know, and he makes for a pretty good stacking option. But I'm going to differentiate myself while saving even more money um, and hopefully getting a tremendous amount of value by stacking him mostly with Kirk as opposed to the much more obvious and probably still more popular uh, Hopkins this week. Yeah, that's... uh... That's interesting because, you know, I, I'm kind of on the same page with you as Murray. You know, I, I think he's going to have a pretty solid ball game uh, this weekend. And to to have Hopkins not be, you know, the, the number one guy, you know, in that game plan just seems a bit weird. So It does, but like I said, Kirk has actually been outscoring him lately. And my pivot will give a little bit more insight when we get there. Uh, we'll get down there. So uh, for my devil this week, Dave, uh, I'm going to fade one of the guys you had briefly mentioned earlier. Um, and I'm going to fade Alvin Kamara. Uh, he's at $8,200. Niners at the Saints. This is He's the second highest priced 
available player on the entire slate this week. San Fran has not given up a hundred yard rusher all season long. They're only giving up 68 yards a game on the ground. They've only yielded three rushing touchdowns to opposing running backs. Um, and just under 19 fantasy points a game. The fact that Mike Thomas is back into that lineup, it's going to eat into some of those, uh, you know, those screen passes, those extra touches he was getting on the backfield. Um, and there's just better options, I feel, at the running back position at a way lesser price tag. Um, save some coin on not rostering Alvin so you can spread that extra root, uh, loot around a little bit um, to upgrade at what I feel is a very, very generous wide receiver slate this week. Uh, I, I'm going to be fading Camara. Yeah, I mean, I probably will too, but just by default. Um, I'll be pretty much fading all running backs that aren't named Johnson um, or Davis <laughs> for the most part. Um, but why don't you go ahead and slide into that pivot, Patrick? Yeah, so, so you know, talking about running backs, uh, you know, my archangel this week, my pivot is in fact a running back. Um, he plays for the Denver Broncos. Uh, he's $5,000, and they got the Raiders this weekend. I got Philip Lindsay as my archangel. Uh, this is kind uh, of, I mean, it is an obvious fade from MG3. You know, as Gordon has out-touched Lindsay in the four games that they've shared the backfield this year uh, by over 16 touches. Uh, Gordon averaging 14 fantasy points a game to Lindsay's 8.7. Lindsay's not had double digit touches in the last three weeks, but he's been super efficient, averaging just under six yards of carry. Uh, the Raiders are giving up over 30 fantasy points a game to opposing running backs, which is the fourth highest in the NFL. They are allowing just under 100 yards a game on the ground while yielding nine rushing touchdowns this season to running backs. I do not see Denver being behind in this game which would lean a little bit more towards Gordon doing some pass catching out of the backfield. I think the game plan this weekend for Dan Denver is going to favor Lindsay running between the tackles a little bit. He's got the big playability. I am going to roll with some Philip Lindsay. Patrick, I have a couple questions for you. I might have an answer or two or not. First one, you know, I love you, right? Yeah, I can see where this is going, probably. <laughs> you you know that I think that you're just devilishly handsome, correct? Oh, boy. You know that, right? What are I, you I going to roast me on, Davey? Patrick, it's really important that I know ahead of time that you already know this in your heart. <laughs> what, Dave? That I, I what? That you're devilishly handsome. Oh, well, I know that. That's oh, obvious. Okay, I just want to make sure you knew that. Okay. I really am heavy on the Broncos passing game again. Um, if it wasn't for free squares in Davis and Johnson this week, I would probably be going right back to the lock and Judy well. Um, I don't even think I'll have Philip Lindsay in my player pool. Uh, but this is a pivot. Um, we're not talking about a, a core player or something crazy. So... Uh, it will definitely be different and unique, um, but yeah, I am I'm very much in on the Denver passing game this week. Just FYI. Now, okay, well, thanks just for saying. the heads up. I just wanted to call you handsome. No, I know you that's did, all. you devil. I know that's it. So my pivot this week directly relates to a lot of what we've talked about already. Um, I'm going Chase Edmonds at what all of a sudden seems like a very pricey $6,300 um, as the Cardinals take on the Bills. So um, kind of uh, talking a lot about this game, or, or not here. Um, now, this should sound really familiar to you, Patrick, because last week, Chase was your Archangel. And this week, he is mine. So I am copying off your paper. Now... As I predicted last week, he did end up becoming pretty chalky. Um, this week, however, after coming off a very disappointing game where he had 11.8 points, 
I think he's going to be much lower owned this week, even before the Davis and, and Johnson um, you know, stuff was coming into play. But he has, he has an even better matchup this week. Bills, bottom 10 in points against running back. So we're off to a good start there. More important than that, however, is that even though you know the fantasy numbers disappointed last week, he still toted that rock 28 times, Patrick. 28 times. <laughs> Nobody had more touches last week than he did. Now, in this case here, Edmonds just checks all the boxes that I look for. And I expect to be heavy overweight on him this week. Um, granted, I won't have him at the same level as these other running backs, but I'm going to probably own him more than most. Now, the beauty is that in the effort to fade Duke, as I mentioned earlier, this is an opportunity where you can stack a running back with a quarterback because of the targets that he gets in the passing game. So you can stack Edmonds with Kyler. I don't have to just stack him with, with Kirk in this place. Um, so I think that you know, even in lineups where I don't have Kyler, I can, you know, Edmonds would still be in play just because even as a running back outside of a stack, I think he's still uh, 100% in play this week. Yeah. Chase Edmonds uh, is, he, he, you know, he, he gets he gets the touches. And like you said, I didn't realize he had 28 carries last week. He didn't have 28 carries. Didn't. He had 28 touches. Touches. I'm sorry. I think he had touches. seven catches. Well, I think he had 21. No, I don't fucking know. I mean, he touched the ball 28 times. Right. I don't give a fuck how he did it, Patrick. <laughs> that, that number, I, I, I didn't look it up, obviously. So yeah. that's that's astonishing to me. Yeah, five more um, touches than anybody else. Fun fact. Wow. So yeah, he's gonna get the rock. You know, he's gonna get the rock. And, and Murray's gonna find him. Yeah. So. And I'll, and I'll tell you what's funny is I did I actually did the notes before we put the before I even knew what the 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 Virgin Mary question of the week was. It just so happens that apparently I have a lot of running back um, options here that are stackable. So with that being said, let me just get right to my uh, heresy, my contrarian pick of the week because I have another stackable running back. Go fucking figure, huh? Patrick, do you remember J.D. McKissick? Who? J.D. McKissick, former Lion? Yes, vaguely. J.D. McKissick, 4900 bucks for that stupid football team without a name. I'm going against said Lions. I'm going to imagine that most people were not expecting to hear his name in this spot whatsoever. Nope. Listen, Lions, dead last in the league in points against running back. Huge shock, eh, huh, Patrick? Yeah. Wow, huge, huge shock. A Lions suck again, suck on defense. Oh, my God. Antonio Gibson is considered the starting running back in Washington, but people are definitely sleeping on McKissick, and especially in his role now that Alex Dumpoff Smith is under center for this team. Even before Smith took over, McKissick was surprisingly still leading the backfield in snaps. Like I said, though, Gibson is considered the starter. This is due mostly to the fact that Washington is often trailing and McKissick is their pass catching back. Last week with with Smith in the game um, for the majority <laughs> of it, McKissick showed that upside that I was talking about as he saw the field for 83% of the snaps and he had 14 targets. 14 targets, Patrick. So the 14 targets probably won't repeat themselves um it, even if because washington will just be ahead because lions fucking suck but you're definitely going to see him used more and more now that smith is under center and he's only going to be behind mclaurin in targets he is cheap albeit risky uh, but with full ppr on dk he definitely has quite a ceiling and especially against that dreadful excuse of a defense that the lions have Yeah, that, uh, like you said, that's not the name that I expected for you to take out of that Washington backfield. Um, you know, anything remotely close to that in targets means that Washington is behind. Um, mm -hmm. And as horrible as our Lions are, um, I mean, it's entirely possible 
Uh, but I just don't think this weekend that that that's going to be the case because that Washington front seven is going to get after Stafford. They're going to get a lead early, and I I think that uh, you know that passing game is going to uh, you know diminish a little bit. Well, that's okay uh, because McKissick catches. 85% of his passes within five yards of the line of scrimmage, so they don't have to chuck yeah. it around. Yeah, uh, not bad. I've got uh, I've got another running back for you. Kind of seems like the theme uh, this weekend. You know, we've been talking about some, some pretty well-priced running back options. Um, and I've got a guy with a really awesome mustache. Um, and you place, referred to uh, him as a handbag three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. The handbag himself. The hand, the handbag himself, Mister Giovanni Bernard. Uh, Fifty-four hundred dollars. Bengals at the Steelers. Uh, not at all a dream matchup by any stretch of the imagination. David Pittsburgh is the best in the league when it comes to keeping opposing running backs in check allowing a measly 17 and a half fantasy points a game. They've given up over 90 rushing yards in a game only twice this season. However, it's been the last two weeks. Bernard takes over for a still injured Joe Mixon. Over the last three weeks, Bernard has registered 47 touches to the tune of 203 total yards and four touchdowns. He's involved in all facets of Cincinnati's game plan. And although it's going to be extremely tough sledding this weekend, uh, I think the upside here is going to be his volume. A cheap number one running back option for the position that I think next to nobody is going to be rostering against that steel curtain. Giovanni, the handbag, mustache, Bernard, is my heresy for this weekend. What say you? Yeah, the contrarian picks are always hard because, you know, they they always suck, at least on the surface. Um, but, yeah, I would expect the Steelers to get ahead. I would expect the Bengals to have to pass the ball, and they've got, they've got the weapons to do so. I mean, Burroughs has been fucking fantastic. He's got Tyler Boyd, A.J. Green, T. Higgins. Um, but he's also got Giovanni Bernard to, to throw the ball to. He's a he's a decent pass catcher. So even if it does, well, it's almost certainly going to turn to that kind of a game script. And that doesn't take Bernard completely out of it like it would a lot of other running backs. Um, and he's not going to be owned. So, you know, when I can spend $1,400 less on Mike Davis and $400 less on David Johnson or... If I want to get stupid, five hundred dollars less on JD McKinnon. I mean, there's so many other options that, yeah, his ownership is under five percent for sure, probably under three percent. It might be at a percent or less. So, if he does, you know, get a little crazy and let's say he catches two passing touchdowns, all of a sudden Giovanni Bernard becomes a pretty nice play. And if either Davis or Johnson, you know either gets hurt or just doesn't quite have the day that we expect, all of a sudden Giovanni Bernard becomes a terrific play, potentially. So I want to steal the page out of your book here a little bit with your core play for my Hail Mary this week. This is a guy that you had already mentioned. Um, Josh Reynolds, $3,500, receiver for the Rams, going up against Seahawks. So as always, like you said, Seahawks game has a chance to be a shootout. Now, when you think about the Rams passing game, as you mentioned, you think of Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett. Josh Reynolds is a forgotten man. And most weeks, let's be honest, who gives a flying fuck about him? I know I don't. But in a matchup against the Seahawks, who, by the way, are giving up 20% more points to wide receivers than any other team in the league. So I didn't even give you the point differential. It's so absurdly different. They're giving up 20% more points. That's just absurd. Absurd. So when I see that, I I take notice, Patrick. And his target share over the last four weeks is actually going to surprise even you, who is going to be playing Jared Goff. Cup leads the way. 
with an average of 12. I don't think 12. it's going to. No? I don't think it's going to. Uh-uh, because I looked. Well, good for you. <laughs> uh, but Cup leads the way with 12 targets per game. Now, that is slightly inflated because last week he got 21 targets. So, 12 is still, you know, high, but it's really inflated with the 21. Uh, after that, Woods and Reynolds are neck and neck with 7.2 and 7.3 targets per game, respectively. Reynolds has actually out-targeted Woods in two of their last three games. For the price, for the potential for him in this matchup, I think I'm going to go out on a limb for a little bit of Josh Reynolds and a potentially slick play. Yeah, I, I love it. And, you know, I had, I had a little bit uh, more, uh, you know, depth, um, you know, in my core play with Goff about Reynolds when I mentioned him just it, just because of what you said. Um, and I'm glad I read the notes so I didn't get into that and you could talk about it a little bit. Well, listen, Patrick, uh, you may have more depth, <laughs> but I have more girth. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's uh, it's not the uh, size of the nail, Davy. It's the weight of the hammer. So uh, I love the Josh Reynolds play. Um, you know, like I said earlier, and it, there's just so many creative sta- sta- stacking options uh, in that game. Uh, the Goff Reynolds stack um, is definitely one that I will be slinging around a little bit and playing with. Um, the kids got talent, uh, and it, you just kind of, you don't get a chance to see it because of those other two guys, because of Woods and Cup, you know, really eating up that target share, uh, in LA and he just needs an opportunity, man. And I think he can be a pretty darn good, uh, wide receiver in the NFL. So, um, you know, as far as my Hail Mary, I'm, I'm going to stick at the wide receiver position as well. Um, you know, laid mentioned earlier, do I think that there's quite a few really good options, um, at that position this week? Um, and this one's, uh, you know, kind of a long shot, uh, but that's what we're going for. Right. So I got Gabriel Davis, $3,400 Buffalo, uh, at the Cardinals, the game that we've talked about a few times already, uh, Arizona's given up over 38 fantasy points a game to wide receivers on the season. Uh, Davis had a really nice, solid game against Seattle last week. Uh, four catches on five targets for 70 yards and a touchdown in the games this year that he's received four or more targets this season. He's averaging 13, almost 13 and a half fantasy points a game, which is right in line with that new magical four X number that you're talking about. He is the fourth receiver in that offense, but the only receiver on that roster that has seen more snaps on the offensive side of the ball than Davis this season is Stefan Diggs. Although, you know, Brown was hurt for a couple games. Um, we know that Murray and we know that Allen are going to go and just slug this one out. Uh, so once again, I think there's going to be plenty of opportunity for the rookie to see some additional snaps this weekend. And I like Gabriel Davis, 3,400 bucks. Yeah, that is in play. Um, It is easier to afford, you know, your Stefan Diggs and stuff whenever you've got such cheap running backs um, at hand. But spoiler alert, uh, the money that I'm going to be saving at these running back positions is probably money that I'm going to throw to your man crush, Devontae Adams, this week. So yeah, that's I a have, good, that's a good play. So I have no problem with, you know, stacking, you know, uh, Kyler with Kirk to save money or stacking, you know, Allen with, I mean, even Davis, I guess. I mean, why the fuck not? Um, you're going to save money somewhere else as well if you're going to pay up for Adams. Um, even with saving all that money at, at running back because he is so expensive. But, but God damn, if he probably isn't just worth it, man, even at 9K, I still think he's a pretty good value. And, and that's just absurd, I think, to say. But, um, I mean, he's just been just 
out of this world lately. Um, yeah, I think I think that you know. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're I fine. I think that Adams Adams is kind of for me. He's taking on that role that Mike Thomas had last year. Oh, and then some. You know, <laughs> he's he's just he, he's matchup proof. He's too he's too good. He's too big. He's too fast. He's too strong. Uh, he's a fantastic route runner. Rodgers knows how to fucking find the guy, and he knows how to find, you know, him and Rodgers got a pretty good chemistry going, and, and, and man, is he just an absolute beast. He's almost a lock every week. Yeah, I think for cash lineups this week, I think what you do is you lock in Davis, you lock in Duke Johnson, you lock in Devontae Adams, and then you go to town with the rest of your lineup. I think that a lot of people are going to do the running backs. I don't know how many people are going to actually pay up for Adams. So oddly enough, I think it may be a way to differentiate yourself while playing a superior player. Um, but hey, fuck it. Take their money. Yeah, de- definitely uh, agree with you, you know, in the cash lineup uh, scenario. Because uh, there's a couple, you know, a couple quarterbacks too. Uh, that have the potential to have a pretty decent game, uh, and they're pretty cheap, you know. And, and it's, you know, one of them that we we briefly kind of mentioned. I mean, Alex Smith in Washington, I think, could have a pretty damn good game this weekend against shut Detroit. Up. Just shut up. That's just. And stop. I think he's just only stop. fifty. I think he's only fifty-two hundred bucks this week. Even I'm not playing I mean, Alex Smith. That's ridiculous. I know. I know. But I'm telling you. Uh, he had a pretty solid game last week, so I'm not playing. Uh, the potential is there. <laughs> Detroit's defense is fucking god awful horrible. So, uh, it, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Dave. I just don't know. Well, here's what I know, Patrick. I know that if somebody out there has got a Virgin Mary question of the week that they would like us to consider for next week or at some point down the road this season, go ahead and slide into either. Patty Mac 33's DMs, or go ahead and hit me up on Twitter or Reddit, or write me a fucking letter if you want to, um, and we will definitely consider it because I, I definitely want these Virgin Mary questions of the week to be things that you know people would like to learn a little bit more about. I think that, like I said, this one this week was was fantastic. It was maybe the most important question that that we could cover. Um, so I look forward to answering those questions each and every week, and I look forward to seeing what kind of questions get presented to us. Yep, uh, great idea, love it. Uh, you know, and, and if you're a you know if you're a guru and and you can think of something that you know could potentially help out a new a new player or somebody new to the you know to the the league or whatever the hell you want to call it, um, you know, and you're not afraid to you know give up one of your your trade secrets, uh, you know, drop that to us as well. And, and maybe we could pass some of that along too. So, uh, that's all I got, Dave. And last thing I got to say to you is, uh, good luck this week because you're going to absolutely need it. Um, and I plan on hosting next week again. So well, that's cool. You're going to be really pissed off. Bye. <laughs> See ya.